Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. It's time for the hottest Terry Bogard channel on YouTube to talk about Terry Bogard. We got a little bit of a streak going on on the channel with thumbnails related to Terry and Mai, so might as well make it 10 for 10. And how are we doing that? Because we got more Terry Bogard related news and information for Street Fighter VI. So what you're looking at right now is a trailer for the battle pass for Street Fighter VI. So, well, it's Fatal Fury slash Terry Bogard flavored. As you can see here, the uh, creative character of the Johnny World Tour is very much dressed up as Andy Bogard. And we got a lot of SNK flavor going on here. Not the least of which is the Battle Hub is going to be SNK themed, which I think is actually really, really cool. And we can see some Fatal Fury markings, some Garo Mark of the Wolves markings. So everything Terry related, everything Fatal Fury related. And also a new little background, an SNK background, which I find really fun. Capcom preparing you for the war, I guess, when the inevitable Capcom versus SNK 3 happens. So a few things to note about this trailer. If you are big on like the Avatar dress up stuff, well, this is gonna be a good one here because we have all the Andy Bogard digs. We have the Joe Higashi digs. So if you wanna dress up as Andy or Joe, hey, this is the opportunity to do so, I suppose. Also, whoever put the trailer together, good job on giving Joe Rashid's level two super. That's a inspired choice. I dig that very much. Gotta keep those tornadoes going. Besides the dress up aspect, Gonna get a bunch of Fatal Fury inspired stickers and hey, more Duck King representation. I'm all for that. And the Battle Pass will also give you access to classic themes from Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, and Joe Higashi. So cool stuff on all. Like the Battle Pass, specifically since it's so Fatal Fury flavored, makes me wonder when Mai shows up if uh, her, cause she would have to have her own Battle Pass, right? Like that just makes sense. Like if hers will be more King of Fighters flavored. Like just like Terry, she's from Fatal Fury as well, but. You know, if we're already doing the one here, might as well do the other, I suppose. Wait and see, I guess, on that one. So that's the Battle Pass, but we also have a small update on the World Tour front. You know, every DLC character gets added to World Tour and they have their own little story, some bigger, some smaller. Like Bison's story stuff, as we covered on the channel, is pretty substantial compared to, say, like Rashid's, which wasn't as much. But yeah, so as far as Terry goes, the big question is, is his appearance going to be canonical? Because, you know, he's not from Street Fighter, right? So that's always the thing with guest characters. Because then you have like a Tekken 7 situation where Akuma was canonical. His events directly affected the plot of the game. And then he's never mentioned ever again in Tekken 8. So we have these tweets from Capcom directly. So to meet up with Terry in World Tour, there's a couple things that need to be done. One, you have to be Ryu's disciple. And two, you have to complete chapter 11-4. And specifically, spoilers, I guess, that's the chapter where you uh, go into the tournament, the Neishal tournament, as the representative of Mad Gear. So we can take it as Terry's in town to join the tournament. Sure, makes sense. Now here's where things get different. He's not in the world like all the other characters. All the other characters, you either meet them in Metro City or Neishal, or they're just on their own stage, selectable on the world map, right? For Terry, you have to go to your bedroom, select the night day cycle, and Terry has his own special icon. So select one fateful day, and then I'm assuming this is effectively a standalone story scenario. As everything else, you're just in World Tour, usually the quest will send you all over the map, all over the world, but here it's all specifically kind of caked into this one area. Certainly very different than how every other DLC has done it. It makes me wonder then, uh, the Pow Pow Cafe, if it's gonna be different than some of the other World Tour stages. All the other World Tour stages, like, you just walk around on a 2D plane. Like, there's usually whatever character's associated with the stage. There's a shopkeeper, a random guy you can fight, but that's about it, right? They're certainly not as detailed as the Metro City map or the Neishal map. So maybe Pow Pow Cafe is uh, more in-depth than that. Like maybe you can explore a greater part of it than uh, the other stages, I don't know. Uh, there's certainly a lot going on, but just from the look of it, like, you know, all the tables and all that kind of stuff, knowing the pathing and how World Tour works, <laughs> uh, I don't think you can just kind of climb up those stairs in the background, but hey, who knows, stranger things have happened. Now the One Fateful Day scenario does show both World Tour and Knockout Festival, that's Pow Pow Cafe. I'm assuming World Tour, at least part of it, is what we're seeing here. Like it couldn't all just be set in the Pow Pow Cafe because obviously enough this trailer shows Terry in like the beginning Metro City area. And I don't know, I, I'm just kind of hope it's substantial. I actually quite like the world tour updates. 
I know it kind of goes ignored by most of the population of the gamer base, but, uh, you know, they add a lot of lore, they add a lot of flavor, and for Terry, specifically, considering, you know, he's a non-canonical character, this just to be, like, absolutely full of, like, Easter eggs, references, all that kind of stuff, because if not now, then when, right? People have argued on Twitter, oh, it looks like they're putting more effort into Terry than the other DLC characters, and I agree, and, like, to the most positive way, like, Terry looks like he got way more time and effort on him than the other characters, and I'm assuming mildly much the same, right? So if you're going this far, basically go all the way. Like, we've already talked a bunch of Easter eggs and all that on the channel from the various trailers, but one that's sticking out here in this specific screenshot. Waitress has a bit of a platter holding a gigantic hoagie. Almost certainly in reference to this classic picture here, Terry and the Southtown crew, they're a bit of foodies. And Terry specifically loves his hoagies. So yeah, like I'm certain there's just gonna be so many references and when the time comes, I'll do my best to go over all of them that we can find. Like even the basic trailers is absolutely full of them. Like we have Blue Mary in the background. We have Roxy in the background. Duck King's ducks are in a barrel on the side. With what's already on the stage and uh, what's going to be in his world tour appearance, I'm expecting a gigantic love in as far as the Easter eggs and references go. And to close off our Terry Bogard minute, because I might as well post everything that's happened Terry Bogard related. Capcom did make this post highlighting some official Terry art. Basically, just looking really sharp here. I do like everyone has their own stylized names and all that for Street Fighter VI. Terry has the big old wolf on it, as he is the legendary Hungry Wolf. They're keeping the branding really strong here. Much the same for Mark of the Wolves Terry. If you ever needed intricate design on his belt buckle and how it works, well, hey, there you go. I do like the inference here, though, because they do talk about a sturdy upper body, but uh, slender, long legs. Almost sounding like it makes like a uh, Terry, like he skips leg day or something like that. But hey, Terry didn't make his money on his legs. He made his money on the biceps, right? This is an upper body business. We'll leave the legs to Chun-Li. Also, a few win quotes have been surfacing. Like say here versus Ryu, I can feel the weight behind your punches, but mine ain't so shabby either, right? Basically just showing respect to Ryu. And as you would expect, I guess, right? But this one really highlights the next one. Versus Ken says, what's wrong? Your attacks are lacking their usual fire. In fact, they're lukewarm. This is a very polite way of saying that Terry's just calling him a bum. Like straight up, like what happened to you? Now, granted in the confines of Street Fighter VI, you know, uh, not exactly Ken's year. Invested in cryptocurrency and also got framed for murder. But still with uh, Terry popping in, you know, eating a lot of Ken's lunch. We got a new blonde martial artist in town, right? Street Fighter 7 rolls around, that old bum Kenny's gone, right? It's always been Ryu versus Terry. And so the legend of the Bogartification is complete. But there you go, friends. That's all the Terry Bogard news fit the print. Uh, we've now completed the streak on the YouTube channel here. Ten videos in a row about my and Terry in some way, some shape, some form. Either Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, whatever it is. There you go, we pulled it off. And that said, that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some Street Fighter or any Terry Bogard related games.